Well, I wouldn't downgrade the fact that it's anecdotal information, because if you go back to the time leading into 08, 09, hmm. um, they valued and they learned in their sort of, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking of going in, the value of anecdotal information. And I'm really not surprised by what this said, because if you look at the economic data that's coming out, right, and I expect the Friday employment number not to be particularly surprising in either direction. So like um, in line with expectations. Yeah, in line right. with expectations. In other words, I don't expect minus 100,000 or right. something like that. Um, but what this number tells you, this tells you why Powell said what he did at Jackson Hole, making a ver for a Fed chair a very blanket statement saying, you know, it the easing of labor markets stops here. All right. And and anecdotal information is very important to them at turns in the cycle because they lead the data. So how are you thinking about all the data that's coming in right now? Because it really seems like we're in a situation where the market, at least, is very sensitive. They don't want to see, for example, a labor market that's too hot. They don't want to see one that is too weak. How are you kind of putting all of this together? Well, I think on the edges, right, there's no recession. Right, mm -hmm. and so on the edges, you see weakening economic growth. The July personal income data was actually pretty good, especially on real spending for discretionary items. In other words, not counting food, energy, rent. Um, so it was actually pretty good, right? So this is really about, this is unusual for most cycles, in that this is really about the Fed easing before recessionary data takes place, as opposed to their usual, which is catching up right? And they don't want to be in catch-up mode, right? And by anyone's model, the funds raise at least 100 basis points too high. So the real question is, how fast do you get down there? And the data will determine that. The market is figuring that once they do the 25, the data will soften enough to scare the market to do like a 50 in December and then another 25 in December, and that's how you get your 100, right? The moves after that right, is really in anticipation of the funds rate going down to adjust for an inflation rate by the next year is 2% instead of 3 I'm looking at labor markets in the beige book. It says that employment levels, Steve, were generally flat to up slightly in recent weeks. A uh, few districts reported that firms reduced shifts in hours, left advertised positions unfilled, or reduced headcount through attrition, though accounts of layoffs remained rare. Employers were more selective with their hires and less likely to expand their workforces, citing concerns about demand and an uncertain economic outlook. Is right. this coupled with the JOLTS data that we got earlier today? Is this a return to normalcy? Well, that's that's the question, right? And that's all. That's been the question all along as to whether or not this is just a return to a normal economy, or whether this is a precursor to recession. What do you think? I think that in that what I'm reading here, this is typical precursor of a recession. You said we're not in a recession right now. No, we're not. We're not in a recession now. To be very clear, right? Um, but before firms start to lay people off right? What do they do? Just in our own experience, right? They slow wage increases. Maybe they don't give wage increases. They cut travel. Business travel is an important, you know, ask, uh, you know, hotels what they're seeing in business travel. Not vacations, but business travel. Uh, and then they cut hours. And then they, there's unfilled positions, and they say, you know what? We're not going to fill this position. We've been hearing for two or three years that a recession is just around the corner. Why is, <laughs> why, and it hasn't, it hasn't, arrived. Well, we haven't gone around enough corners yet.